All right, Fish Holic fam, well, welcome back to another episode. Uh, as you can see, we got the kayak at the ready here at the water's edge on the river, and uh, it's a little breezy today, as you can see from the water here. So fishing on this western side of the river uh, wouldn't be a great idea. So we're gonna hop in and probably just beeline it to the eastern side of the river because we've got like a really hard southeast wind, and uh, I think we'll have uh, some shelter over there and maybe we get on a bite of snook or jack ball. But uh, yeah, let's get out there and uh, see if we can make it happen. I'm gonna skip all the B-roll today and just stick straight to fishing. You know, the classic uh, old style uh, fishaholic videos like I used to do uh, more often uh, way back in the day and uh, just uh, have an enjoyable time out there. So let's do it. Let's go get them. I'll be happy if we can get at least like six, seven snook today or so, or just like six, seven fish. All right, made it to the first area where I want to start fishing and uh, we're going to try tossing out this little uh, Yozuri crankbait and uh, I'll probably start off trolling it just along uh, these boats and structure. Oh, there's one. Fish on. Oh, I lost them. Dang it. Only been fishing for probably five minutes and got our first bite. I'm gonna reel it in, and uh, then we'll probably troll back the other way. Fish on. Got a little guy here. All right, not a giant, but it's a start. Cool. I believe this is a uh, sword spine snook. <laughs> Gave us an extra jump before going home. All right, well, we got that first one uh, down about 12 feet along the structure, and uh, that fish was like right on the bottom, I believe, because uh, I felt my uh, little crankbait hit something on the bottom and then like it deflected, and then we got that bite. Hopefully the next one's a little bit bigger. There's another one. This feels a little bit better. There we go. A little bit of an upgrade, but not much. Hopefully as uh, it starts to get later, the fish uh, start to grow a little bit. Look at that. Dropped the crankbait. Nice little healthy one. We'll send her back. All right, let's keep it going. We're uh, getting close to half a dozen. Got two on the board. But in reality, it's like we have to sew those last two together to make uh, one really nice fish that I'd like to catch. <laughs> I 
there's another one. Fish on. I think this is another dinky one. Yep. Oh, that's three. Pretty. There's one. Fish on. They are chewing now. Oh, there we go. That's a pretty decent uh, sword spine or a tarpon snook. There we go, not bad. Beautiful fish, that's gotta be at least like 20, 22. I didn't want them to shake and drop them, so. There he goes. <laughs> I just like plopped them in the water. Pliers. Let's do it again. There he is. That feels like a little bit better fish. Or not. <laughs> This one hit hard, and now it's just coming in like a boot. Hmm, it does have a little more weight to it. A little bit better common snook. All right, there he is. All right, so pretty sweet. We're doing good. That's uh, five now in uh, like the last like 40 minutes or so. Oh, there was one. Lost them. All right, I turned around. We're going back the other way now. And it seems like we get more bites going to the east than we do going to the west. But... Uh, I think it's just because there's a lot more current out at, out at the further end of this structure and all this current right now is pushing right up against this and uh, these fish are just sitting under the boat, sitting under the dock and waiting for fish to swim by them and they're hitting just like that. <sighs> That feels like a better fish. Much better fish. Woo, this one's ripping some drag. And he's staying down deep. He's got, uh, a lot more weight. Definitely the telltale sign of a bigger snook. So I backed up off on the so I backed off on the drag a little bit because we're out from the structure and 
and this is definitely much bigger than what we've been catching so far today so i don't want to put too much pressure on them now because uh we're rounding third base i just gotta get them close enough so i can net them and oh my gosh it's a catfish no i thought it was gonna be a big snook look at that monster sail cat sorry if i tricked you guys at home this catfish even tricked me that's a pretty big one and really fat look at that belly they pull hard man there we go all right let's get back out there there he is fish on this feels like another little snook oh gosh almost jumped in the boat all right sweet well that's uh six snook for the day now we just got to work on some bigger ones still Fish on. Oh, quick release. Just another little guy. There he is. Fish on. Another small guy. There he is. All right, well, that's snook number seven. Let's uh, keep it going. There's a lot of fish here. It's, it's hard to leave this spot because I don't want to leave fish to go find uh, fish, but we might have to if we give it a couple more passes and nothing decent jumps on. There's another fish. Oh. This one's pulling a little harder. Oh, a snagged snook right, we got him across the head by the way the setup that I'm using today is my Daiwa BGMQ 6000D which is paired with the Daiwa 7 foot 6 uh, back bay spinning rod and uh, I have a 20 pound green moss power pro braid main line and I'm using a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader and to start, I have my drag set pretty tight because I want those hooks to get penetrated as soon as we get bit, just like that. There he is. And then I want to try and pull the fish out from the structure. And, you know, I'll probably get like one chance with like a real big fish to turn him and get him away from the structure. And then once he's out, then I can loosen up on the drag and just play him kind of like how I played that catfish. Like carbon copies. There he is. Oh, I lost him. That was a good fish. Could have been another catfish, though, but it felt a lot heavier. Dang it. Oh, one just hit it as I was reeling it in.
this guy had a follower. Ooh, this one's pulling pretty good. Oh yeah, this might be a better snook. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a much better quality fish. Heck yeah. That might go slot right there. All right, let's get a quick measurement on this girl. Zero right there. And oh yeah, she, she's a little over 28. So this is a legal slot size fish, but I'm gonna kayak her back to the structure and drop her off there. Down she goes. All right, another fish is gonna hit any second. Five, four, three, two, one, and bam. I think this is another good quality one. I'm kind of feeling like another slot size fish. Ah, probably a little short actually. There we go. Nice. There's a nice one that we're gonna catch, or at least get a bite from them. There he is. I called that. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that one. That was definitely not the fish that we marked on the uh, screen. A little technique I learned, if you hold the snook like that, they flop around a lot less. Oh, look at all those fish. That is a big one. On our next pass, I'm gonna try trolling higher in the water column. Now that it's getting later, I'm seeing more fish suspending like eight to four feet down. But then as you can see here, there's still fish on the bottom. That looks like a decent one. Oh, there he is. Oh gosh. I felt this fish rubbing on something. Oh no. I don't know what this fish has me on. It might be something under this boat here.
Oh. All right, unfortunately I had to break the line. Oh, man. Well, not the kind of way I want to end a successful day on the water. And unfortunately we wasted like 10, 15 minutes uh, trying to untangle uh, the line from, I believe the propeller on that catamaran and uh, the current is sweeping by there pretty quick. And I bet you the propeller is going like this under the water and uh, that snook after he hit went perfectly up and I felt him rubbing on the boat and uh, I bet you that propeller just uh, sucked up that line or it just got wrapped on there somehow. And uh, I, I felt like I could have uh, untangled that fish if there wasn't the current and the wind that was kind of pushing me at the boat and I didn't want to hit the boat. So I did the best that I could to try to um, untangle it and it didn't work. I also even tried to extend my net to like go under there and uh, you know, maybe net the fish on the other side because I think it was tangled and then the fish was out on the other side, other end of the, the catamaran. And I also tried to snag the other side the line on the other side with a couple trebles, but that didn't work. So uh, I was able to slide the fish back through and uh, it broke just at the leader there. So the fish probably escaped out the other end and uh, those hooks will rust out probably in a couple weeks and that fish will be fine. But other than losing the fish and the lure, I'm more bummed that uh, we wasted like 10, that 10, 15 minute window right as the sun was setting where we could have probably caught like four or five more fish. And uh, as soon as the sun set and it started getting dark, oh, there's a plane. Uh, yeah, the bite just shut off and uh, I don't I don't have any larger size swimming plugs on me If I did it pr that probably would have worked a little bit better uh, as we started to lose the uh, filmable daylight But uh, yeah, we caught a lot of fish and uh, I'm heading on in right now And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please smash the like button hit the subscribe button I'll put all my tackle and equipment down in the description below and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next episode So like always live to fish fish to live